Another key feature of Das's poetry is an evident postmodern self-consciousness about writing. The process of production and reception of her poetry, in a sense, is linked to the production, reception and consumption of herself, her gendered identity, the cultural constructedness of her image and status in society that finds such women aberrant, deviant or freakish. Therefore, an important aspect of her writing is an acute sense of self-awareness bordering on a sexual textual narcissism. Thus, it is a female narcissist who offers the model for Das's creativity, ironically explicating both the disjuncture between the bridging of the gap between the desiring gaze and the state of being gazed at, on which are grounded conventional notions of the masculine and feminine. I think uh, we can we can uh, bring in uh, interesting examples like some of the premises of, say, Laura Mulvey or uh, John Berger. This cathexis upon image, often bordering on a cureness, helps her talk of the softness of the female body, the endless female hungers, uh, where the narcissistic circulation of desire often blurs the boundaries between gay and straight eros. In poem after poem, we see Kamala Das striking the posture of narcissus, contemplating and musing more over her own self and image than anything else in the outer world. The off-quoted poem, The Looking Glass, is an example. Getting a man to love you is easy. Only be honest about your wants as woman. Stand nude before the glass with him so that he sees himself the stronger one and believes it so and you so much more softer, younger, lovelier. Admit your admiration. The poem goes on. For her, masculinity is as much a performance as femininity is. I quote from the poem Relationship. Yes, it was my desire that made him male and beautiful. Unquote. These lines deconstruct the notions of gender as a stable identity rather positing it as an identity tenuously constituted in time, instituted in an exterior space through a stylized repetition of acts, as Judith Butler says. The effect of gender is produced through the stylization of the body and hence must be understood as the mundane ways in which bodily gestures, movements and styles of various kinds constitute the illusion of an abiding gendered self. This was from Gender Trouble. Look at how this gets reflected in the poetry of Kamala Das. I quote from the poem Introduction. Dress in saris, be girl, be wife, they said. It's time to choose a role, a name. I'm sinner, I'm saint, I'm beloved and the betrayed. I too call myself I. Judith Butler says that to take up a particular sexual position always involves becoming haunted by what's excluded. Thus, one is defined as much by what one is not as by the position that one explicitly inhabits. Thus, the fact that all sexual subject positions are tenuous, just as all religious, social, cultural positions are, is illustrated by the fact that a strict and puritan Allah had haunted the love frolic of Krishna in her imagination. 